Hey guys, welcome to my channel. My name is Reading Bear, and I hope you are ready for some more stories. And today, we'll take a look at some new entitled people content. If you enjoyed my content, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel and post some bear emojis in the comment. And now, let's dive right into the stories. The first story is titled Neighbor claims my driveway is public land and repeatedly trespasses. Big mistake. I moved to an area that is not really farmland, but everything is pretty rural. For example, my driveway isn't paved and instead it is just the gravel that a paved driveway is usually built over. I don't really mind this, but I know that it isn't going to last long and decide to save up the money to get in paved. In the meantime, I was just going to be sparse in using it so I wouldn't really need to get it replaced. It was a really long driveway that went all the way into the back of my property, and I parked my car as close to the street as possible. This way if any of the road needed to have extra work done it would just be a small section. It is also important to note for this story that there is no kind of fence or barrier between me and the neighbors that live behind me. It really didn't take me long to hate these neighbors because they seemed to not care that they acted like trash people. They were loud and drunk late at night, and I could even see garbage piling up on the side of their yard. It wasn't any of my business how they acted since they were on their own property, and these were only minor annoyances. That was until I found out that they were using my driveway without permission. That's right they were bringing their cars and truck over the grass and onto my driveway without even asking me. Sometimes going as far as driving through the whole thing and going over my grass to get around my car. Since it would save them time getting to the main road. I was not having any of this and I tried to catch one of them in the act as they drove. This plan failed quickly as seeing me didn't seem to deter them and I was actually worried about getting hit. They were not driving slowly either and the wear and tear on the gravel was obvious very quickly. I went to plan B which was go to their house and explain to them calmly that I didn't want them using my driveway because it was mine. I wasn't going to mention my plans of paving since I felt they might take that as an invitation to use it. A man opened the door and despite being the late afternoon it looked like he just woke up. Me. Hello, I'm your new neighbor that moved in behind you. Neighbor. What do you want? Wow friendly way to greet your new neighbor, right? Me. I noticed that some cars from your property have been going through my driveway to get to the main road. I would prefer that you didn't do that and instead went around with the side street because you are damaging my grass and driveway. Neighbor. Wait are you saying that is your car blocking the main road? Me. You mean the car I park at the end of my driveway? Neighbor. That driveway is public property and we have been needing to go around you for ages. I could call the cops and have you arrested. Me. It actually isn't public, it is my driveway that I got when I bought the property. Neighbor. You better check your facts and find somewhere else to park. He closed the door on me, and I was stunned. For a little while I thought that maybe I had somehow been the one to mess things up and that the driveway was not considered my property. I went into the town hall and asked if somebody could help me figure out who it really belonged to. I was glad to hear that it was in fact my property and asked if I could get a copy of the paperwork. I thought showing it to neighbor would make them understand and at least stop doing it. I would have preferred an apology, but I knew from their behavior already that it wasn't going to happen. Instead, he told me I was wrong again, and the illegal use of my driveway continued. Funny enough for claiming that it needed to be clear to get to the main road they sure left their cars and trucks parked a lot. I decided that I wasn't going to keep messing around with these neighbors and instead just let a lawyer figure things out. I got cameras and plenty of video proving that they were using it along with that paper from the town. I even sent a letter to the neighbors that I had them sign for to prove they got it stating that I was formally requesting them to stop using the driveway. While the case was going on I felt like I needed to get a little bit of revenge of my own on their cars. I didn't want to damage them or anything that would get me in trouble, just be a little bit of a thorn in their side. I wanted them to be as frustrated as I was even if it was for just a little while. I decided that I was going to put a bumper sticker on their car and truck that they weren't going to be happy about. Without going into detail let's just say where I live has a very outspoken voice for one political party. So, a bumper sticker on their cars supporting the other party seemed really funny to me. You can guess that it was not funny to them, and I got to watch them spend half a morning trying to peel it off the best they could. It wasn't much, but it made me feel better. As for the lawyers I finally got my day in court and presented all of the evidence to a judge. 
Neighbor showed up without a lawyer because he was so convinced it was public land and he was going to win. The look on his face when the judge explained to him that it was my driveway and just because the previous owner let him use it doesn't mean I had to and that it was not public for his use. He was warned that if he parked on my driveway, I was in my right to get it towed at his expense. If he went through it, he was considered trespassing, and I could call the police on him. I ended up getting a restraining order against neighbor that was just enough to keep him off of my property. That way if he did try and trespass again, he would also be getting arrested for violating the restraining order. He was angry and I knew that if we were not in front of a judge, he would have said some colorful things to me. Instead, he just walked out looking angry and knowing that he lost. It was a mixed bag of a win because at the end of it all I was out a bunch of money. I had to pay the lawyer and also save more to get the driveway redone. It took a lot longer than I wanted it to because they had basically destroyed portions of it, and I had to make it from scratch. I know I could have just kept using the gravel or gotten something cheaper, but I just wanted the pavement, so I didn't need to worry. I also shortened the driveway so that it didn't seem to be connecting the two houses anymore. So far neighbor has listened to the judge and stayed far away from me and my property. If he comes back, you can be sure I will be ready with the police and maybe some more fun bumper stickers in hand. I might have been new in town but messing with my property was the worst way you could have introduced yourselves. I am going to just keep an eye on them and maybe even look into getting a fence installed so there is some kind of divider in between us just in case. I don't want to have to go back to court over where the property line is and other stuff I read on here. The next story is titled. Screwing over landlord's shitty father who parks on our driveway. I've been inspired by months of lurking to post my own experience of malicious compliance. I hope you enjoy it as much as I enjoyed it at the time. The story starts four years ago. I was living with two friends in London within a two-minute walk from a popular underground station. We all were and still are teachers, but not at the same school. This will all be relevant later. We were renting from a friend of a friend who was abroad for the year. Our house had a drive with two parking spaces, which was convenient as we had two cars between the three of us and parking on the road was somewhat restricted. To prevent people from driving to a road near the station, parking and then taking the train to commute to work, all the surrounding area including our road had non-restricted parking except for in two time slots. Between 12 and 1 and 5 and 6. So you could park most of the time, but you could never leave the car on the road for more than a few hours, or you'd get a ticket. Our problems arose early on, not with our landlord as you might expect, but with landlord's shitty father, henceforth known as LSF. LSF lived in the same area, but a 20-minute walk away from the station as opposed to our two minutes. We quickly found that he was driving to the station and parking on what used to be his son's but what was now our drive. Either because he didn't want to walk the 20 minutes or because he wanted to avoid the expensive official station car park. It went something like this. 7 AM. We leave the house to get to school, leaving both driveways empty. 8 AM. LSF leaves for work finds our driveway devoid of cars, and parks on our drive. 5 p.m. We come home from school and find LSF's car on our drive. One of us parks in the other space, the other cannot park on the road for another hour without getting ticketed. So, we'd have to go and try and find another road to park in without the restricted parking, not likely, circle for the hour, or just cross our fingers and risk getting a ticket. None of the options were ideal and it varied which one we went for. 7.30 p.m. LSF returns, takes his car off the drive and we can then fetch our car and put it back on the drive. We went through all the usual channels first. Leaving a polite note on the windscreen, leaving less than polite notes on the windscreen. Soon, we called our landlord and asked him to speak to his father. Whilst he took our side though, our landlord clearly didn't have much of a spine and this failed to get LSF off our drive either. Eventually, we lie in wait one evening for him to come and collect his car so that we can speak to him in person ourselves. The conversation goes something like this. Us. Excuse me, LSF, but it's very inconvenient for you to keep parking here. And our tenancy clearly includes use of the double driveway. LSF. I helped pay for the deposit on this house. I'll park here if I bloody well like. Us. So, what do you expect us to do then? LSF. Not my problem. Find somewhere else. I don't care where. This is where the malicious compliance comes in. We know full well that LSF lives somewhere in the neighborhood. What if we park on his drive and give him a taste of his own medicine? 
We can just imagine it now. LSF leaving our drive, driving home, only to find his own drive occupied. We think it's a genius plan. The only problem is that we don't know where the bastard lives, but we shrug those concerns off. Nothing a bit of old internet digging won't fix. So, we start our research. We search for this guy's last name in conjunction with our local area and whilst we find several old newspaper articles with our landlord in as he used to be part of the neighborhood watch, we find nothing on his father, except dodgy looking websites which want us to pay a fee for his telephone number and address. We're on the verge of giving up when it hits me. If the internet can't help us, we're going to have to get a bit old school. I call up my parents who live a few miles away, but in the same burrow. And at the back of their dusty cupboard, they find the answer to my hopes and prayers. Obsolete and untouched for 10 years or more, it's the phone book. And as luck would have it, LSF is in it. Telephone number, and most importantly address. We put our plan into action that next evening. We come home from work, and as usual LSF's car is on our drive. Tonight, we don't circle for an hour. Tonight, we drive to his address and park it squarely on his empty driveway. And on the windscreen, we leave a note. As suggested, we parked somewhere else. He never parked on our driveway again. We later found out from the landlord that he got a ticket from parking on his road, which had permit only parking for the people without driveways. That's karma for you. Edit. For people suggesting that we should have had him towed. Unfortunately, the law is very different in UK than in the US. It's against the law to prevent someone from accessing the highway i.e., to park in front of their drive when their car is on it, but it's not a criminal offense to park on someone's drive. It's technically trespass, but that's a civil offense and not a criminal one. You can't tow them, and whilst you can call the police, they have no obligation to get involved. In London, they'd laugh at you. The police barely investigate burglaries nowadays, let alone cars on somebody else's driveway. The last story is titled. Would I be the asshole for moving away from my disabled boyfriend? I, 25 female, have been with my boyfriend, 25 male, since we were 19. When we were 23, he was injured in a skiing accident. His injuries were so severe that he was paralyzed from the neck down and he has been semi-comatose ever since. Other than that, he can do very little. He is no longer there, his body is essentially functioning on autopilot. There are more medical issues, but I do not want to divulge his private information any more than I have to. We were planning to get married. I still love him very much. Since his accident, he has lived at the hospital and then with his parents. We lived together but our fifth floor apartment was not suitable for his needs and I worked too much to care for him. His parents live 90 minutes out from our city. I visit four-fifths times a week, sometimes more if I can. It's been a point of contention between his mother and myself that I do not visit every day. I literally cannot do this with the hours I work, and I am scared I will get in a road traffic accident driving in the dark and icy conditions. We live in a very snowy, icy state. His family basically lives on a mountain and runs a skiing resort, so the roads are terrifying. I work in a small and intensely competitive field. The salary I am on right now is fine for the city I live in, major US city, but I could be earning almost double if I relocate. I've been offered an amazing job across the country. I really wanted to take it. When I told his mother about how I was considering this job, she lost it. She told me I was an awful person to consider moving away from him. She said I was betraying him by abandoning him and moving on. I told her that I couldn't just stop living because of what happened. She started screaming at me. I am empathetic because I understand that she feels as though the world is moving on without him, I feel that way too. I am very conflicted, I am unsure if it is wrong to do this. Me and my boyfriend had promised we would marry each other. I do feel like I am abandoning him. Would I be the asshole for taking the job? Update. I just would like to update anyone who left a kind comment and might stumble upon the update. That post in the comments and chats I received have pushed me to accept the job. I move cities January 9th, I start my job January 16th. This is all happening very quickly, but I have realized that I do need to put myself first and I am not an asshole for living my life, despite it being incredibly painful. My boyfriend's mother does not agree. She is no longer speaking to me. I am not allowed to see my boyfriend, who I guess is no longer my boyfriend and hasn't been for two years. I knew this would happen, so I said goodbye to him before I told her. I do not want to repeat what she said to me, however it was awful. She says I ruined Christmas because I made the decision on the 23rd but she knew this was possible and it was a time-sensitive offer. 
As one commenter said, it was never going to be a good time to do this. On the plus side, her hating me has made it so that I have to leave for this job. I have no ties here anymore. I may be the asshole in her eyes, but this is what I need. I am having fleeting moments of regret, but my family and therapist have said that in the five days since making this decision, I seem lighter. I am excited for this new chapter, thank you again for the kind comments. Thank you for listening.